Wonderful to see everyone, and uh, just as always, we'll give the notices for the things going on in the week. And we've got a few people to hold in prayer. Uh, Carol is not with us today and is not feeling well. Gladys, although she wouldn't have been with us today, is uh, feeling um, signs of her age. Mm. She's struggling a little bit today. And bless her at 97, you know, may she long continue as well. And Sandy is obviously away on holiday. Uh, Tina is um, uh, get preparing for her father's funeral on Friday, so we'll hold her and will in prayer later as well. We're going to open the service in prayer, and then I'll announce the announcements today. Denise, would you open us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come with grateful hearts this, this afternoon. Come to praise you and welcome you for what you have got to say to us. Let us go from this house, singing your praises and thanksgiving for all you do for us. Let us never take things for granted, but let us realise just how what a wonderful God we serve. And now, Lord, we just leave this meeting open. Have your own way. Open our hearts, minds and souls that we will go from this house praising your wonderful name. We need us in your hands. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So just to remind us, tonight we've got the Bible study, 6 till 7 p.m. Adult and youth, do come if you can. And uh, Jack did say he was going to try and make this service, so I pray he'll be coming in in the next minute or so. But uh, that's the Bible studies tonight, and we're seeing... Um, Good growth around the Word of God and uh, prayer time and things are being answered for people in their circumstances and lives. Thursday we've got the Worship Academy, 6.30 till 8.30. And again, we saw a lovely swell of people last week. And uh, I've just got to get a couple of permissions from those that were here. But we might be putting that online as well because it was a, a real good time. Uh, singing to God be the glory, we managed to get that on uh, tape, and that was wonderful. Yeah, and then you're right, Jack. Good to see you. Um, and then uh, Friday, of course, we've got the community luncheon, and we've seen numbers stable there, but a nice continuous number of the community that we are feeding, but uh, providing a gospel message and prayer. That's absolutely critical. Um, we need more cooks, we need more team. We had, um, we've got a lovely uh, meal this Friday. Yeah, a lovely curry that Chris will be uh, providing and uh, pudding. So do come, we're having Romanian food, we're having, uh, what else are we having? We've got other culture, we had Jamaican food, didn't we? And we're having all sorts of foods uh, on the menu, which is wonderful. We need a South African. I'm waiting for you to say, yeah. but uh, we're, we're blessed with everything that's happening in the community luncheon. Then, of course, you've got the recovery cafe, 2.30, 4.30, and we are looking to birth in the next few weeks, maybe a drama, dance-type group for evangelism on the streets. First Saturday, so we won't be out this Saturday, but uh, Ridgeway Church is out doing evangelism. If you're around and about, Go and have a chat with them, go and support them, and go and tell them where you're based and what you're doing, and uh, just have rich fellowship with them. But when they tell you to join their church, say, no, 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 you've already had Isaac, let us stay in our church. Um, and uh, then Sunday, we've got our morning uh, worship where we're represented, our youth service three till five in Churchill, and we had a great time on Sunday. Um, witnessing to the community and combining with those 17, 18,000 churches. It goes up every day. But praise God, lots were combining. So that was a real good time of partnership. And of course, P Pentecost on the Green went extremely well as well. So God is blessing uh, everything in these towns we're stepping out and witnessing. And then of course, Sunday evening gospel service. We've got a fantastic preacher uh, lined up. A preacher who doesn't preach but gives a talk. So we'll look forward to that as well. Um, so we're now going to um, move into scripture. And 
Becky's going to come up and read it for us, but as she does, it's Psalm 46. I was at uh, a shop the other day. I can't mention denominational tax. I was at a charity shop linked with the church work in Redditch. And um, as I was looking at a DVD or two, I was chatting to someone there, a member of the community, and I saw a tattoo, just a bit of a tattoo with God on. And I spoke to the person and said, are you a Christian? They went, no. I said, why have you got God tattooed all over you? Yeah, Yeah. Psalm 46 verse 5. Well, there we go. And she did, she had uh, Psalm 46 verse 5 tattooed on her, you know, shoulder, I suppose it would be. Uh, But didn't know what it was about and what it was uh, there. So we're going to read Psalm 46 and Becky's going to come up and read it. That's the... The reason for our choice today, a very rich psalm, Psalm 46. And then we'll move into a time of worship. God is our refuge and strength, and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains break with their energy. There is a river whose free may flood the pure blood in the holy place where the most high God. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. Desolation she has brought on the earth. He makes war cease, the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Mm. Oh God, thank you. And we're now going to move into a time of worship and uh, we'll be led in that by uh, James. First one is number 358. Crown him with many crowns. Praise God. A little sad and sing.
anyone need a sheet?
let us just take a moment to just give thanks in prayer um, around the assembly for all God has done and for those that we've spoke about holding prayer today. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your many wonderful gifts. Mm. Uh, we could talk of the practical ways you've blessed us. We could talk of the many uh, riches you've made available so that we can live. But I want to thank you above all, Jesus, for your presence with us. Because compared to that, the rest pales into insignificance. We pray for you. that you will come around and alongside those that we've spoken about today. We think of Gladys as she's not feeling 100% and Carol Lord. We just pray that you will heal and move upon them. We also think of Will and Tina at this time Lord as they're preparing for Friday and the celebration of life of Tina's father. Lord we also pray for Keith Bailey who's got some decisions conversations in these next couple of days. Lord, we just pray that your hand will be upon all of those meetings. And we pray that you will be glorified and worshipped throughout. Mm. We pray this in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Lord, we are so privileged once again to be able to come together in your house. Lord, though we may be giving under the speed, we know that you are still here with us. Lord, we pray for those who have already been mentioned, and we pray for those who we promised to pray for during these coming days. Lord, we are so glad that we are able just to talk to you as a friend. But Lord, we thank you because you are more than our friend, you are our saviour also. And so Lord, we have come in this lunch hour today, in this one o'clock praise service, to, to get that big filling of our hearts and our souls from you. To get from you, Lord, just what you want us to receive this afternoon. To be still in your presence. To listen to your word. To worship you with song. And we thank you for this great privilege, Lord. Lord, we indeed pray for all those who need you in a very real and tangible way. Lord, we pray for each other gathered here. You know us. And you accept us. So Lord, we just pray indeed that you will continue to be with us this afternoon. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for each one of us here. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless and keep us all. And we pray, Lord, that we may be a witness to you and to your glory, and tell more people about Jesus in our town of Redditch. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
we'd like to turn to uh, Psalm 91. Whoever finds it, maybe they would like to uh, read verses 1 to 4 for me. Psalm 91, verses 1 to 4. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Amen. Do you like doing great days? <laughs> do you like doing great day? I like doing great day. You know. We stay in bed and you cuddle up and you, you don't want anything to do with the world. Get the idea? Yeah? The duvet day. This is my um, this is my prayer duvet. When um, when you go to different appointments, people give you some when you leave or when you arrive, I was gonna say people give you some strange gifts. I mean that in the nicest tense. <laughs> Unusual gift, should I say? Um, and um, this is a gift that I had given to me many, many years ago, um, with a little card, and it said on the little card, um, "May God bless you in your ministry, as you maybe put this on your knee, or um, you just cover a chair with it, or put it on the end of your bed. May I assure you that every square has been prayed over." for you in a particular way. And I thought, oh, that's lovely. So every square, this particular lady chose the material and sewed so that I would be a blessing to someone. Not a blessed nuisance, <laughs> but a blessing to someone. And I've been thinking uh, lately of um, you know, we like a, a duvet day, don't we? Some of us, I guess, like a duvet day more than others. But think about it. Snuggling down, not having to get up. Just choosing to feel that warmth underneath the cover of the duvet. Maybe not in this kind of weather, I know it's... I would say it's quite a nice duvet day to have a new bread, with it being quite, you know, nicky out there. But um, there we just rest. We can block out the world, literally pull the cover up onto our chin, or maybe even over our head. Well, whether or not you have had or ever had a duvet day, we all understand the concept, don't we, of our own reality. I think that potentially we all understand what it's like to feel tired, to feel stressed, and at some point or another to retreat into a safe place, even if it's just for a moment or two. I was reminded um, a few weeks ago when um, I was uh, actually at the conference in Warwick, um, in the university there, of the mother goose. And she was there with her little goslings and they were following her. Just following her. God makes some beautiful creatures for us to look at, doesn't he? And they're also on the lake with a swan with her signets. And they were having a ride under the mother's wings. You've all seen those beautiful pictures, haven't you? Of the little goslings. And when the mum goes, they all go. The swan, they all jump on and they're all off. All creatures 
need a safe place to feel comfortable, to be able to feel nourished, to feel warm. The need to feel covered, to be close. They tell me it's one of the most, most basic human needs to feel safe and secure. I recently read this lovely quote. Love is feeling safe no matter where you are. Love is feeling safe no matter where you are. I pondered on this quote for a little while and realised that it was just what the true love of God is like. When you live in the knowledge of God's love for you, you feel safe no matter where you are. It's a bit like being wrapped in a big, great big snuggly duvet. It's like hopping on the back of a mama swan's back or hiding under the mama goslin's wings. God offers that safe place, that offers a safe love that protects us and lasts forever. Psalm 91 verse 4 read, He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. First Corinthians and 13 verses 6 and 7 says these words, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom shall I trust? Surely he will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. We may not always see it or feel it. We might forget it at times or even wonder if God has left us to fend for ourselves in the heat of a hard situation or in our own individual life. But his protection is real. He doesn't care. He does care. He doesn't forget. He doesn't ignore us. If we belong to him, his love is so great, so great, that often it's like snuggling under a big duvet, getting lost in it. He will never leave us by ourselves. When I think about it, is it any coincidence that this is a 911 verse? In whatever trouble we face today, God is the place of refuge that we can run to. He is our safe place. The word dwell, used in this verse, actually means to take up permanent residence in. He reminds us to stay in his presence, for it's a permanent place for living. His word says, if we do that, we will rest. We will rest in the very shadow of the Almighty. Shadows, by definition, are places of protection or covering. They provide relief from the direct heat of the sun. If the heat is severe, the shade is the place that we run to. What we actually feel is the intensity of the heat. And yet the heat is still there in the shadow. But we just don't notice it. It reminds us, especially in the tough stuff, that we never 
ever fall below. Full heat of troubles bearing down heavily upon us. It's a struggle at times to, heat, to keep trudging through life. Pressure, stress can seem as stifling as a hot afternoon summer sun. Yet God whispers truth, strong and sure. Walk in my shadow, he invites us. Stay up close to my side. It's in the safe place that brings confidence for when we are resting in God's shadows. We were never faced with all heat of our difficulties because his shelter is greater than any pain. His shade, his shadow, diminishes what is actually felt in the intensity of all the heat. Rest, peace and calm can rise up strong right in the struggling mess of life. And we are constantly assured he is in control. Sometimes, maybe unintentionally, in the business or difficulties of living, we might strive to survive on our own. We forget that we need, what we need most is God's protection and the comfort of his presence. They, of course, are freely available to those who love him, to those who walk, who dwell in the shadow of the Most High. The entire chapter of Psalm 91 is filled with the goodness and the power of God, of the greatness of the God who we serve. The great reminders that he is faithfully, he is faithful and faithfully works on our behalf for all those who love him. And at the end of it all, God gives us many reasons why we do not have to fear him. He promises, <laughs> because he loves me, because he loves you, says the Lord, I will rescue you, I will protect you, for I know you, I acknowledge you by your name. He calls us by our name, and we answer him. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver and honour you. I will honour you with long life. I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. So, whether you choose to snuggle up, this is a fair short, by the way. choose to snuggle up in bed, keeping warm. Today may we choose to snuggle up with him in prayer. May we choose true love, the love of God which protects us, which shelters us, covers us up under his mighty wing, far better than any snuggling do they far greater than a prayer shawl? Why? Because he says, I am your Lord. You are my children. I love you. I will be with you. All you need to do is ask, and my presence will be there. My presence is waiting for you to ask. So whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in whom will I trust? Surely he will save me from the foul snare and from the decaying, deadly pestilence. He will cover me, me, with his mighty feathers, and under his wings I will find 
refuge. His faithfulness will be my shield and my rampant. And he will show me his salvation all the days of my life. Next time you read Psalm 91, take out the you. Put your name in there. And remember, God is there for you. You can't escape his love. His love is everywhere. So next time you're tempted to stay in bed, next time you're tempted to die under that duvet, make sure that you take God with you. to share. The Psalms are so rich, aren't they, with the, the good, the bad and the ugly of existence as David the Psalmist really lays it out, doesn't he, and really speaks from the heart. And uh, it's a wonderful psalm to uh, remind ourselves of, Psalm 91. Janice is going to come up now and, uh, I believe, and uh, lead us in some more worship as we uh, ponder on those thoughts. Where are we next, please, Janice? Um, on the sheet, page 10, number 30. Page 10, number 30, thank you. Let us stand and sing, You are the mighty King.
before we go to that song, um, just to remind everyone, there's an offertory at the front if you'd like to give to the work of the church here. And uh, does anyone require any prayer at this time? Yeah? Lovely. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Annie if you'll come up to the uh, front. And those that would uh, lay hands on, uh, please do. And we'll pray for you before we move into our final song. What is that final song, please, Johnny? So everyone can be ready for you. Number 262, Lovely Vine. Lovely, lovely Vine. Lord, very often doors will close and windows will open. And Lord, we just pray just now that whatever decision we've got to make, that we know, Lord, because she loves you, that you will be in that decision with her, that you will show her the way, that you will open that door, that you will guide her safely through. Lord, just grant to her a clear mind, grant to her a a love and an understanding that will be so powerful that she will know which way to go. Lord, we thank you because you do guide our steps. We thank you because you are ever before us, behind us, around us and with us. And so Lord, we pray that for her to say, that you will just surround her, you will just fill her with your wisdom so that she will know which way is the right way to go. So Lord, we leave this decision in your hands. Thank you, Lord, for the love to die by your word. By your gifts and spirit, we have to speak for and say, this is the way, Lord, you live. Yeah. We pray for clarity. We pray for courage. We pray, Lord, that where the decision needs to be made, will be made clear. We will give the boldness and the strength and the wisdom to make that decision, Lord, we, we just pray for a safe way, a sense of your presence of the Lord. As she ponders on um, this decision that she has to make, that you be with her to read it all, Lord, and guide her that directly, Lord, into the right place. In Jesus' name. Amen. God. And I'm going to ask you just to take a look around the assembly for a moment. Thank you. Find someone that when we go into refreshments you're going to challenge and ask them if they're coming tonight to the Bible study. <laughs> you find that one person and make sure they've got a good reason why they're missing out on the things of God this evening. But we're now going to stand and sing our final song. 262, Love Divine, and then I'll ask for someone to close us in prayer. Love Divine.
we thank you that we can come before you, as we just said, lost in wonder, love and praise. Lord, we thank you that we can love you because you first loved us. We can know what love truly is because, Father, you lavished your love on us. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that we can know your presence, showing us in practical ways the Father's love. And so we pray that as we go out from this place, we will walk close to you. You will go with us and guide us in an ongoing closeness and walk with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.